Numerical Computation, Chapter 11, Video 10. In this video, we consider the heat equation with a different type of boundary condition, that is, a Neumann boundary condition, as stated here. So the same heat equation, and now, at the boundary when x equals to zero, we do not prescribe the temperature. Instead, we say the temperature change in the x direction is decided. So at, t equals, at x equals to zero, we want this to be zero, and let's say at x equals to one, and u sub x equals to alpha, which is some constant, for example. So the physical meaning of um, this boundary condition is different. So temperature is not decided on the boundary. The derivative of the temperature, which means the gradient of the temperature change in space, usually um, denotes the heat flow. So if you say that the temperature right at the end should not change in the x direction, then you are saying in that end there is no heat coming in or going out. In other words, it means at that end the rod is insulated. Now at x equal to 1, we have a boundary condition says u sub x equals to a constant a. That would mean that um, you are heating the rod at the end or cooling it at the end and causing a heat flow going through. Okay, so to summarize, at x equal to 0, the rod is insulated. And at x equal to 1, it's being heated if alpha is less than 1 or being cooled if alpha is bigger than 1. We now consider um, only the explicit Euler time step. Okay. So using the same notation, writing gamma equals to delta t over delta x squared, we can set up the forward Euler step, which we shall be familiar with by now. And this holds for j at all the inner points from 1, 2 to m minus 1. To treat the Neumann boundary condition, we use the same trick as we did before. That is, um, we use the something called ghost boundary. So since we have it on two boundaries, so we need to introduce two ghost boundary points. That is, um, x minus 1, that's on the left of x equal to 0, and a point xm plus 1, that is on the right of xm. They are both outside the domain. Okay, we also use um, this index u minus 1 and this index u m plus 1 to denote the approximate value of the solution outside the domain. Okay, so these two are the, the ghost boundary and in the end we will get rid of them. We just use them to set up the equation at the boundary. S let's consider first um, the boundary point at j equal to 0, that is x equal to 0. We would use a second order final difference to approximate the boundary condition as follows. So u sub x at x0 is now approximated by a central final difference, u1 minus u negative 1 over 2 delta x. And there the boundary condition is 0. Okay, so and this means u negative 1 equal to u1 at any time step n. So also now we assume that the heat equation holds at x equal to 0, that is, the discrete heat equation holds at j equals to 0. So let's write that discrete scheme out at j equal to 0 at time step n to compute n plus 1. We get this, and we see that um, to compute j equal to 0, because it's central final difference, we needed information at negative 1 and 1. And this value at negative 1, we could get rid of by using this formula 3 here. Okay, plugging that in, so that will equal to u1, and combine this u1 with this u1, we just get 2 gamma u1n, and this term we copy. So this will be the equation for us to use when j equals to 0. 
and then after that for j equals to 1, 2, 3, all the way to m minus 1, we would just use the equation scheme number 2, because those are the um, inner points. Okay, so finally, the last point to deal with is the boundary point where j equals to m. And uh, we now approximate the Neumann boundary condition also using central final difference. Okay, so um, u at m plus 1 minus u at m minus 1 divided by 2 delta x. And the boundary condition says um, it shall equal to alpha. So you can solve this equation for u m plus 1 and write it out. And this is what we have. So multiply both sides by 2 delta x and move this term to the right. And then we have this expression. And this holds for all n bigger than 0.